Hello. In this video, we are going to look at the um, MO structure of more homonuclear diatomics from the second row of the periodic table. Our first victim will be C2 with a 2 minus charge. In inorganic chemistry, this ion is referred to as carbide. In organic chemistry, it is referred to as the acetylide ion. Recall that each carbon atom is going to have six electrons. So we sketch on each side of the board the atomic orbitals of carbon. Then we need to form the molecular orbitals that are formed by the overlap of the atomic orbitals on the two carbon atoms. So again, our 1s orbitals will interact to form a bonding combination, which is lower in energy, and an antibonding combination, which is higher in energy. The same thing happens for the 2s orbitals. We get a bonding combination and an antibonding combination that's higher in energy, 2 sigma star. And then with the p orbitals, we have the lowest energy combination is a pi bonding, and we have two of those, so it's doubly degenerate, followed by a sigma bonding combination. Higher in energy, we end up with a doubly degenerate pi antibonding combination. And the highest in energy of all is a sigma bonding combination. And we can use our orange color again to show the relationships between the atomic orbitals and the molecular orbitals that they form. It's kind of complicated on the pi side because we have a number of drawings to get here. And we'll just put it on one side to keep the drawing from getting too cluttered. So now we have a total of six electrons here, six electrons there for a total of 12 electrons if we simply had the neutral molecule C2. But since we have a dianion, we have to add two additional electrons. So in our MO diagram, we needed a total of 14 electrons. Again, we start putting the electrons in at the bottom to fulfill the alpha principle. And we get our first eight electrons in without any trouble. We have six remaining electrons and we have arrived at the three pi level, which is doubly degenerate. So our first two electrons have to go one in each to fulfill Hunt's rule. But we, since we still have more electrons to go, we end up filling up the three pi level. That's 14, um, 12 electrons, 10, 12. We have two more electrons to allocate and these end up going into the three sigma. So for this, what is the bond order of acetylide? Well, we notice that we have two, four, six, eight, ten bonding electrons. We have a total of two, four antibonding electrons. Ten minus four equals six. We take half of that number. So this is equivalent to um, a triple bond, which is how we conveniently and conventionally draw the acetylide or the carbide ions using Lewis Langmuir theory. Our next molecule of interest is dinitrogen N2, which makes up about 80% of the atmosphere, so it's an incredibly important compound. And we'll also notice an interesting relationship between dinitrogen and our previous example of carbide. Now we notice that nitrogen has seven electrons in each atom. So let's put in the correct number of electrons in the atomic orbitals that correspond to nitrogen. Now one thing to emphasize, which is not easy to show in a small whiteboard, it is that as we go from carbon to nitrogen, since we increase the nuclear charge, the energies of all the atomic orbitals of nitrogen will be lower than the corresponding atomic orbitals on carbon. Therefore, the nitrogen 1s is lower than the carbon 1s, the nitrogen 2s is lower than the carbon 2s, and the nitrogen 2ps are lower in energy than the carbon 2s. It's an important point to emphasize. But now we notice something. If we 
want to we form the molecular orbitals the same way that we did for carbide, sigma, sigma, star, that works the same way. Now we notice that if we add the total number of electrons in the system, we get 14. 14 is exactly the same number of electrons that we found in carbide ion. When we have this situation where we have two different species with the same number of electrons and at least roughly similar bonding pattern, we call these two species isoelectronic. We start to notice uh, important similarities of compounds when we notice that they're isoelectronic. So it's an interesting feature to notice about pairs or groups of compounds, this same number of electrons influencing the fact that they tend to have similar properties. So we know that, for example, in carbide, the carbide unit has a triple bond, which is short and very strong, so it's very difficult to break. We also notice the same thing for nitrogen. Nitrogen features a triple bond, which is very short, very strong, and extremely difficult to break. In fact, it's so difficult to break that the great French chemist Lavoisier dubbed it azote, not alive. And we know that to get the nitrogen uh, triple bond to break, under normal circumstances, it takes high heat or lightning, electrical spark of some type. But there are bacteria of the rhizobium genus, which actually have the ability to enzymatically break the nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond, which is of enormous uh, importance in agriculture. So we see that once we have the carbide ion MO diagram, we can almost immediately from that convert it into the dinitrogen MO diagram. We just have to make sure that we remember to add the two additional electrons in the case of dinitrogen are already present in the atoms, whereas in the case of carbide, those are provided externally to the system to convert it from C2 to C2 to minus. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.